Hello everyone, happy Sunday. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend so far. In today's video, we're going to go over the overall market. We're going to take a look at what the next steps are for this week and which direction the market can go. All right, so without further ado, let's get started with the video. All right, so number one, we've got a bunch of earnings this week. We have PayPal Monday. Uh, tomorrow after the close, we have Airbnb. After the close tomorrow, along with uh, Rivian, Twilio. And then we have Roblox Wednesday pre-market, Disney after hours. And we have a Chinese name, JD Thursday morning. So there's, you know, uh, this week is going to be a lot more economically sensitive stocks. Uh, it isn't the big, heavy tech related earnings week. So uh, we should see some movement coming out of uh, consumer centric sectors. So it should be very interesting this week because we also have uh, CPI data coming out. So uh, Wednesday, we're going to have CPI data coming out Wednesday morning. So of course, that's going to be very, uh, cause the market to be very volatile, in my opinion. And then Thursday, we have PPI data coming out. Friday morning, we have um, preliminary consumer sentiment. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be important. Now, when let's just take a look at the chart. So number one, I just want to start off by looking at the VIX. So we know that the VIX usually moves inverse to the overall market. So if the VIX is falling, that means that the market is rising, all right? So on the VIX on Friday, we had a 14.4% drop in the VIX. So when the market drops, obviously that's bullish. Or when the VIX drops, obviously that's bullish for the market. Now, what's important here is what ends up happening afterward. So with the VIX, we can continue falling Maybe even tomorrow we could continue falling, right? And that would coincide. So us continuing to fall on the VIX would coincide with increasing on the SPY. So there, we can clearly see that there's still downside potential on the VIX. But we are at a very, very important support level. And this is on huge uh, green or red days on the VIX. That's when you start to, you know, scale in or start to look towards light light safer uh plays in the opposite direction because now is the time when you want to start assuming that the vix can start to bounce so over here is one point another downward move at this level of support is another point where you think that the vix can stop and get a bit of a bounce right so that like as we're falling in the vix that would mean that the spy is rising and rising so now I'm basically explaining that because now when we look at the SPY, so the SPY is clearly above um, resistance, right? We have major resistance at around 414, 415, and especially we have this gap to fill down here at 415.27. So there is still more room to the upside on the SPY, similar that there is more room to the downside on the VIX, right? Clearly, we just saw a huge red candle on the VIX. Generally, that means, you know, we get a bit like, say, for example, this is that red candle, we get a bit of a bounce, and then we continue moving down lower. That's technically what should be happening on the VIX. And if this ends up happening on the VIX, then the SPY is going to end up bouncing a bit higher. Okay, so now the interesting point is Monday and Tuesday, we don't really have any news. Uh, the earnings is, are also not going to affect the overall market that heavily. All right. So now what is going to be interesting is whether or not the SPY can get to these levels of resistance, right? And then, I mean, like, you, once you get to these points of resistance, technically it becomes a very good opportunity to short because you're not expecting the VIX to continue falling lower. And at the same time, the SPY is entering important resistance zones. But the issue is that Wednesday morning, we have CPI data, right? So it, you know, it becomes really difficult, but at the same time, you know, just technically, we should be rising. The VIX, like, we, like we, basically what should be happening is we should get a pullback and a continuation. So I'm expecting at least um, a pullback and continuation. I would be very surprised if, um, you know, we just completely reverse down here because, um, 
yeah, I would I would assume that we would get some sort of a pullback and continuation. And then even after CPI data news comes out, we would still potentially get a um a rally. So what could end up happening is we could we could become very, very strong and paint like a very, very bullish picture uh Wednesday after CPI data comes out with like a rally, etc. But then that rally, in my opinion, would also um I'm not sure if any of these moves are going to be sustainable, but uh, we're just going to have to be patient and see. Because, um, yeah, especially if we don't end up breaking above these levels of resistance for CPI data, then it is going to end up being a really, really good short opportunity. So as soon as we see some sort of weakness, we could take, um, you know, at the money, tight stop loss puts. So... That is essentially my plan for that. So there's that on the SPY. The other thing I want to show you guys was the NASDAQ and how we are also creating a rising wedge on the NASDAQ. But this is, you could also argue, you know, the bull flag. The issue is that, so this is a bull flag, right? Technically, this is a bull flag, right? And this is also a bull flag, you know, when you connect it this way. But generally, bull flags that are, like this <laughs> don't generally work so but the thing is is that there's a lot of strength apple just reported um positive earnings microsoft is carrying the uh tech sector at the moment tesla is doing really well amazon is doing well google is doing well they're holding support all right so we're not seeing any weakness and we're seeing the largest tech giants showing a lot of strength. We see Nvidia starting to do really, really well again. And then AMD didn't uh, break 80. So everything is doing what it needs to for a continued move upwards. So um, even, so the issue I think is, yeah, so even as we continue into uh, CPI data, we should be getting a bit of a pullback uh, Monday, we should get a pullback and then a continued move up. So the pullback is uh, should be happening to at least uh, 4.11.50. But if it's going to be, if this is going to be very, very bullish and we never get a pullback. So for it to be super, super bullish, we cannot allow this to break below 4.11.50, 4.12. But um, it would make sense to get a pullback and a continue move up. <laughs> The VIX still has more room to the downside. The SPY, the NASDAQ, the tech stocks have more room to the upside. But um, yeah, I, I would be very surprised if all of this is just a giant bull trap. I would assume that they would make the bull trap closer to CPI or after. Once the CPI data numbers come out, not on a Monday. So there is my thought process. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys have an amazing day and an amazing weekend and um yeah we're gonna have an amazing week we're gonna be day trading we're going to be scalping everything and um we're gonna be making money regardless so make sure you guys tune in to the stream and uh love you guys take care make sure to like comment subscribe do all that good stuff and i will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning thank you